are on the pole position is Christopher. Is Oliver Bryant in the beautiful red and gold TVR, so, excuse me, AC Cobra, which has been a famous car. That car with the same registration number has been raced since period, and Oliver Bryant and that car reckon to be one of the quickest Cobras in Europe. Um, there is a gap, sadly, on the second row of the grid, which was meant to be Callum Lockie, whose interview we just heard, with Julian Thomas in a Daytona Coupe. But they but, have had a win this weekend. So but just been, behind yeah. them yeah. are Andrew Jordan and Roy Alderslade in the number 27 Daytona Coupe as well, yeah. prepared by them. So they get a one more warm-up lap in order to come round to a rolling start. Uh, uh, Chris, these are historic cars, but that particular car, 27, is almost brand new raced at Donington about three weeks ago uh, in the main race had an excellent second position um, so watch for that one Ollie Bryant Mike Whitaker as we said on pole position and in fourth place uh, excitingly um, uh, with John Pearson the brother of Gary whose interview you just saw is Alex Brundle son of Martin Brundle a current racer a very strong racer in Le Mans type racing and on more famous names through this grid Tiffany Dell sharing with John Spears on uh, sixth place on the grid you'll see how close the times are this is very yeah. very close racing in the seventh position on the grid Jake was Jake Hill. Hill in fact we have young drivers and that was Mike Whitaker's reference wasn't yeah, it yeah. Andrew yeah. so he drives all the way through they have to do a pit stop if you're sitting in the car you can stay sitting in the car but a lot of people change that's yeah. Mike Wilde yeah. sharing with Master Supremo Ron Maiden. Mike Wilds I saw racing a yeah. BRM on this track <laughs> in Formula One racing in period. Yeah. This is a massive grid. We have 44 starters in this race um, and um, there are some really, really beautiful cars. The little car just there going through the picture, the little red bubble coupe, is a very rare Ginetta that belongs to Ron Maiden. He's sharing with Mike Wilds. But as you can see, Cobras, Mustangs, Austin Healy's, E-types in all shapes, Porsche 911, Lotus Elan, um, it's a fabulous grid, Andrew. Yeah, the one to watch for, the, the uh, which is a little tiddler in it, of course, is the Jake Hill uh, car, which is a, a Lotus Elan 26R, the racing version of the Lotus Elan, and um, Jake, uh, current uh, leader of the British Touring Car Championship, has done fantastic things in that car in the past, saw a marvellous win at Silverstone a couple of years ago, it was uh, just going through the field here, and uh, there's a big name at the back, O. Webb, or Webb O, that's Ollie Webb, who uh, is a guy that's raced in the World Endurance Championship um, for a number of years and has been also a European Le Mans um, LMT, LMP2 champion in the yeah. past <laughs> and also drives a lot of very fast road cars and uh, develops those sort of machinery. Now, the temperature is rather lower than the forecast led yeah, us to absolutely. expect, so there's a lot of weaving, tyre warming going on. These cars, of course, are running on Dunlop um, historic race spec treaded tyres. There's nothing fancy about the tyres here, and you learn to slip and slide. Rolling starts in Masters races. Bryant and Whitaker come round, and there's, <laughs> I see the number 27 popping slightly forward from his row, just in front of the Pearson Brundle car. And we do um, now know who the starters are in each of these. Yeah. So thundering oh, across the line and away they go. Into Paddock Hill Bend, always the most exciting part of the start of any Brands Hatch race. And look at that E-type going round the outside of Whitaker into second place. Uh, that, um, is Alec Brundle starting that car? Yes, he is. Yeah, Alex Brundle at the wheel. Yeah. We'll be hearing from Alex Brundle a little bit later. Beautiful There's Ferrari Alex. 250 yeah. GTO bread van being driven by the Austrian collecting family, the Halusas. Uh, and and Brundle's trying try up the inside of Ollie Bryant, going into Surtees to lead away onto the Grand Prix circuit. Uh, two different lines through that corner, aren't there, Andrew? Yeah. Uh, Bryant, you notice on the Cobra the bubble for taller drivers. Forgotten who the, that, that's obviously in the Alan Mann colours. So who would that? It was originally done for Sir John Whitmore. Oh, that's right. Yes. Uh, look at that. Uh, that is a fine spec. Whitaker, as he said, um, may have started in second. He's going to be happy to yeah, but let he's one or two of the quick boys go. He's a, he's a canny banker. He's going to uh, play a canny race, I think, from what he said in the interview. And he, he lands two he lands in there. Andrew Jordan has started the number 27. Yeah. Daytona Coupe, which is lying in fourth position yeah, at the that's, moment. that's the car he built for Roy um, Alderslade. Yes, he's just here behind the Whitaker TVR. And um, Mike Jordan, uh, Andrew, 
Mike and Andrew Jordan. Look how small that little Ginetta is. Um, I, I, I believe those Ginetta G4s got independent rear suspension. And although, of course, Ginetta is, is now a company up in Leeds, the founders of the company, the Walkler brothers, are still allowed to build these replicas. And I'm yes, not sure if that's a real one or a replica. But, but that's well, being driven. That's a proper uh, one that Ron Maiden's yeah, had for some years. And is being driven yeah. by Mike Wilde's ex Grand Prix driver. driver ex Formula 5000 ace. And lots of success at Le Mans as well. There are a lot of very well-known names right. in this field, and we'll keep you up um, to date with where we are. But at the moment, Alex Brundle leads Oliver Bryant as they head round Druids for the second time. Ollie Bryant has is, is also driven current car remedy racing at Le Mans and Aston Martin three or four years ago. Huge success in historic racing and oh, 40 or 50 different cars he's raced. The uh, E-type that's pushing there is Jason Minshaw at the wheel of Martin Melling's uh, number 55 car, 55 car, the blue E-type um, with the lightweight body shape. The Ferrari some way down, it was, of course, a three-litre V12. Beautiful, beautiful car, um, and we understand quite highly valued original yeah. car. Um, the, uh, among the other early movers and shakers there is number 21, uh, which is being driven by James Cottingham, an yep. extremely experienced driver, the owner and runner nowadays, the manager of what was his father's company, TK Engineering. Yeah. Probably the world's most respected historic Ferrari specialist. Yes, yeah, But driving exactly. not a Ferrari on this occasion, driving that pale blue with the stripe down the bonnet. Now, and he's struggling to get past Whitaker, but he's going for it now. And so Whitaker drops down now um, to sixth place. Yeah, but uh, I don't think he's worried about that. You know, yeah. he, he, I think he's won this race six out of the last eight years. And um, this meeting did actually run last year. It's one of the few meetings that did run. And Whitaker won here. Here he's looking for the triple. He's looking for the hat trick here. I'm yeah. um, just talking a little bit about this. The, the, the third car in your picture, the Daytona Cobra Coupe. Yes. Now, they built six of those originally. All these cars are recreations. The chassis, amazingly, are built in Poland, <laughs> or some of them are. Certainly yes. the Jordan one was. And people recreate these cars, obviously using a lot of the original bits. Yeah. Oh, it all but has to not, be original not, bits. not only the original. I saw one of the originals on the Tour de France a few years ago, driven by one of the world's richest men, Rob Walton. Rob of Walton. Walmart fame. And, and he he's got one. Yes. And I believe there's and a Ori Pescarolo's got one as well. Yes. And the man behind the lifts company yeah, in ATS France, lifts. ATS Lifts, yeah. has, has another original. Yeah. But it's great to see these out. There's another one of the recreations there, number 69. Yeah. And that's the all Irish team there yep. of Cullen and Shovlin, Paddy Shovlin. Yeah. They're up to seventh place now. We saw them racing a, yesterday. They raced the, a saloon car yesterday, yeah, didn't they? Yeah, uh, two uh, Dubliners, I believe. And uh, uh, Shovlin, a big property developer in the student accommodation uh, field. Ah, uh, well. And uh, he's... Uh, if that gets you out yeah, motor racing, a did a turn of co-driver. Colin is like one of the, the real stars of racing at Mondello. He's got a lot of races there. And they're quick, those two boys. Yeah, and um, a quick uh, Porsche 911 up there pushing on as well. Nice little battle here between Austin Healey and Porsche 911, all uh, very period. Remember these yep. cars. Oh, the wheels, to... look, at, look at the wonderful exactly. wheels. Exactly. These cars all have to be to correct 1966 specification. As Andrew and I are explaining, a number of the cars are modern recreations, nothing wrong with that. Yeah, but uh, if they have very what strict are, guidelines. If what are, they have what are called FIA homologation papers, which means yeah. that they are inspected independently to make sure that they do comply with what the regulations of 1966 were. Obviously, there are some safety modifications, as you can see in the Porsche. Yeah. Big, obviously, uh, roll cages inside them. That sometimes helps stiffen the car a little, doesn't it? Yeah. But, but the tyre treads, the engine size and everything else has to be as was correct in period. Nice little battle going on there as they sweep through at the final corner, clearways, to cross the line. So the th great thing about this race Andrew, is not just 44 entrants, but about four different class races yeah. going on at the same time. The beautiful Ferrari of Lucas Halusa is down in 14th place, which is a problem. <laughs> and as you can see, if you drive your Healy enthusiastically enough, you can keep up with some of the Cobras <laughs> and some of the E-types. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, Andrew Dorden pushing on now. He's just uh, lowered the uh, fastest lap to 143.669. And so watch for Andrew Jordan, former British Touring Car Champion, of course, no longer in the series. No. And uh, 
making his name in a big way as a preparer and racer in historics and everything from minis uh, upwards to this Cobra. Nice little battle there, yeah. E-Type versus Elan. Yeah, and the Lotus a, Elan, uh, particularly the 26R, as it that, was called. That's not a 26R, that that's, one. That's, no, that's, that's, a, that's a regular yeah. one. There's the bread van, Look Ferrari bread van. Look how beautiful that is. Elusa's had plenty of laps around yeah. here, but he was also, as you will see if you stick with us through the day, later on in the day, trying to drive his McLaren M23 Formula One car. So there's a lucky land. Um, gets... He had a great race yesterday. Remember, he had a fantastic last corner overtake to snatch second place, didn't he? In the Formula One yeah, race. the Austrian driver. And to see that car out at Brands Hatch is a really, really rare treat. It has sometimes been seen at Goodwood, but very rarely seen elsewhere. American V8 power gets past it with the 147. Uh, that's the uh, TVR, 167, excuse me, is the um, TVR also with the big V8 engine. And he's just been uh, taken. That's the two Dodd uh, uh, father and son team there in the TVR, and uh, they've just nipped past the Halusa Ferrari. Just going back to the bread van. Um, yes, what car, a beautiful car. Um, based on a 1961 250 GT Ferrari with a new body, which was designed by Giotto Pizzarini. And there's a Pizzarini actual car in this race, isn't it, Chris, as well? And uh, Giovanni Volpi, they were the designers of that car. And an extraordinary piece of kit. It is absolutely beautiful. Count Volpi. He Count was Volpi, in, in, in was Italy. it Scuderia? Triple S, wasn't yeah. it? I think it was called the team. Another uh, uh, close up there of uh, Wilson and Pearson Shelby Cobra. Very pretty car, number four there. The white Cobra Coupe. And that is a Coupe as opposed to the Daytona Coupe, yeah. if you're not confused so far. Currently being driven by Wilson, uh, and uh, Pearson will take it on a little later on. But remember, this is a, the longest race we have. Yep, 90 it, minutes. But as Mike Whitaker said in that interview, car management, tyre management, very important in this race. Absolutely. Um, so there is a pit stop window, um, which generally sits either side of about halfway through. So yep. um, we're expecting that to start at about 35 minutes into the race of a 90 minute race. We've done 10 minutes so far, about 35 minutes in and to have a pit window open for about 15 minutes. Just the pit lane will get very, very crowded. Yeah. They're not rushed pit stops, we should yeah. explain now. You have to spend a minute at the pits yeah. in order to make sure that drivers are properly strapped in yeah. and there's no one rushing and pushing and sending someone out not fully prepared in the, in the rush. I've seen this bread van over the years, Chris. Yeah. And I never realized before that it was designed by Bitsarini. And when you look at it, the whole front looks like a Bitsarini Griffo. Yeah, it's a very yes. similar. Which I, is a car uh, yeah. that appeared a little bit later, you're right, yeah. with the two big nostrils well, the, at the, the front. There was the ISO Griffo and then the Bitsarini body Griffo, and they had a, all the aluminium sheets were riveted. I once went to the Dubois circuit in Ireland from Derby in a Bitsarini Griffo, <laughs> and the bloke who was racing it called Derek Wharton, um, never been to a circuit like that before. He'd never raced a car before he'd raced in a land. <laughs> and the best bit of all was when we presented the car for scrutineering. Absolute truth, the scrutineer, very Irish, walked around the car, he kicked each of the four tyres and says, tis a fine car. <laughs> and that was the scrutineering process, absolutely yeah. marvellous. I think uh, you'll find that the, the Masters team run a rather yeah. tighter I scrutineering think they just process sort of, nowadays. There's a car we haven't talked about, it's in a Marcus in there as well, haven't we? Yes, we? indeed. But they raced at Le Mans over the years and uh, lots of different, Jem Marsh That's and then his son Callum, Chris Marsh. Callum Grant there at the wheel of that nice Yeah, Marcos. well, he's a young driver that's um, been very successful in historic Formula Ford. And that's the uh, 1800 uh, GT version of the Marcus, which yeah, has a Volvo, Volvo engine. Yeah, yeah you see, yeah, he says are. in uniform, has a in unison, has a Volvo engine. Um, and that's the pretty little red car at the back of that group. This is a lovely mixed battle, so typical of gentlemen drivers. Ilan, yeah. Ilan, Porsche, Porsche Healy, Healy, Marcos. Yeah. Isn't that nice? Um, that's uh, and he's a quick boy, isn't he? Uh, Callum Grant has won yeah. a lot of Formula Junior races yeah, and they're coming up to lap the very 
willing but unfortunately rather slow Alfa Romeo, Romeo yes, belonging so. to uh, Hans Jorg Hausener, also from Austria, who is loving it but enjoying himself very much but finding 1300 cc. Oh no! Oh, oh no! Rob Maynard's there, got a big problem. There's a big problem. That's Mike Wiles's yellow helmet. Yep. It's um, With the Ron diamonds. Maiden. Are, yeah. Ron Maiden is not going to get to run this but What's happened uh, there? racist car. Well, he has broken front, left front suspension, hasn't he? He has broken the suspension. Or well, he has broken it. Uh, I think he's going to try and get off onto the... That's the sensible Yeah, there's thing the experience of Mike Wilds. Look. Well done, Mark Wilds. That is the uh, little short run-in that brings you back into the paddock. And I'm afraid that is Ron Maiden, the president of Masters, is not going to get to drive. Uh, Mike Wilds had obviously had either had contact or simply a suspension had broken but now, he's but dropped out of ninth place we haven't really mentioned the number 14 oh. car but oh look at this i mean there's the battle with the uh, the irishman and the bread van yeah. uh, uh, tiffany dell did tiff start in the 14 car i have this information for you racing, no he didn't no, john Spears john started Spears. i mean john's um Definitely a pension, but he's a quick, still a quick lad. And, and um, I think he sits on a number of um, serious government committees, yeah. um, mainly to do with IT. Um, I think he's a big IT king, it's John Spears. But also, as I said yesterday, also a star croquet, but he's paid croquet for England. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think he's the only racing driver that's represented England in croquet. Yeah, probably <laughs> in any soft <laughs> stick and ball store. I can't think of many famous, famous my, my, of any race drivers who were ever great cricketers. No. Though, of course, it was always here at Brands Hatch in the 1960s oh, okay. during the Formula One Grand Prix. There used to be a charity cricket match, didn't there? Indeed, yes. And, um, and they still do it at Goodwood, of course, don't they? Charity cricket match. And at the first ever Masters Historic Festival at Brands Hatch, it must have been 2005, yeah. we had a little celebration moment of cricket yeah. on the infield here did, at Brands Hatch did the drivers, with Derek Bell yeah. as umpire. Did the drivers play Lord Downs 11? Lord, they played the Lord's Taverners. Oh, Lord's Taverners. Yes, uh, indeed. Well, I yeah, know the that, I remember the uh, uh, yeah. Taverners. Um, there's a Morgan, of course, and it's not the Morgan SLR in this race. Uh, as that, well, that, I think it is. That, that, one, so that is a traditional one, obviously. That is being driven by Simon or Raby Gann um, yes, at the moment. been around and, a long time. Um, well, no, actually, he's the owner. It's being driven by um, Billy Bellinger, who yeah, helps prepare the car. Yeah, um, he's a big very, Morgan man, isn't he? A big Morgan man. He's well-known Morgan preparer. But uh, Simon or Raby Gann, whose car that is, number 71, uh, has one of the famous Le Mans cars, yeah. um, and we also have that in the race. And we did um, just record yesterday that the body was designed by Chris Lawrence and John Sprids, who died just three days ago in Hawaii, famous rally driver, yes. pair of sprites and special sprites and so on. So and, uh, and that car, look out for that car, the Morgan SLR, is number 57, and that belongs to John Emberson and Peter Horsman, yeah. and it's being driven there. I'm not sure where they are lying at the moment. No. Uh, um, right near the uh, 28th they are at the moment. That car's all in aluminium. And, and they, the same body went on to Triumph and a Morgan, because it fitted. It's and a uh, very much a Le Mans car, but beautiful looking. Beautiful machine. shape, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. Beautiful shape. Uh, this very smartly driven uh, Porsche number 65 here that we're looking at belongs to the Bates brothers, James and Mark Bates, long, long, long-standing masters racers. Andrew. Yeah, and they know they, how to drive that. They know how to drive that. They also have, as you'll see in the sports car race, the Le Mans sports car race a little later on, have a much later Porsche with a big engine and so yeah. on in the GT class in that. But um, yes, dedicated masters supporters and dedicated Porsche supporters, the Bates brothers there in that elegant little a uh, white with a red stripe 911 so at the front we've got two professional drivers in uh, Alex Brundle oh, oh dear. Dear, the 167 TVR has gone uh, grass tracking yeah he certainly has yeah. hasn't he um, um, that's, a, that's, so the, that's Dodd. the Dodds family yes yeah. and, um, and they just moved up a couple of places the previous lap so threw it all away sadly they, they will have dropped back they were 10th place weren't they yeah, yeah. Um, yes one thing I'm I'll be interested to see later in the race will be that, we talked about it a bit, um, the Rob Fenn, who lives locally in West Kingstown, and, and, and Jake Hill. Fenn's in the car at the moment. Hill, obviously, the pro driver, 
when he gets in that car, he's, he's got to make it fly. I think he, he might well get in amongst the Cobras and the E-types. E and of course, you know, it's obviously going to be a bit easier on the tyres as well as the uh, This the is how car. quick the leader is. They're, yeah. they're, that's a very Brundle colour helmet, isn't it? Yes, it's a, just a slightly Martins. different version. And they did race together at Le Mans, of course, about they six, did, seven years but ago. But they're now lapping you. Um, oh, yeah. you. This is an endurance race, so... Yeah. Bear with us, we'll keep you posted as to what's happening, but in a 2.65 mile circuit, you're going to find a lot of lappery happening. You see and on the left all the gaps there, so it's, you know, Jordan certainly keeping Alex Brundle very honest indeed. Yes. And, um, you know, doing very similar lap times at the moment. Um, Ollie Bryant actually also is closed up a little bit, so the, the, the three of them um, within three and a half seconds of each other. Did I see an oval there? Yes, you did. That's uh, what I was uh, just about to point out. Yeah, that's a just in just in front of the little green uh, Porsche there. Mini engine in the front of that oval. Oval Design Company, who built that a mini base car. Yeah. Very pretty device. Quite a few people use mini components. There was the Mini Gem, there's the Mini Marcus, but for me the oval was the nicest looking of them. Yes, so that's Nick Swift um, oh, driving yeah. that car at well, the moment. Nick, Nick is the acknowledged mini racing expert, yeah. and it's got one of his mini engines in that car, yeah. the little Ogle SX 1000, so 1000cc engine. Brundle looking very relaxed and lovely shot there as the car goes underneath the start-finish line and into Paddock Hill then again. He's not throwing it around too much, is he? He's, no, he's not, managing no, the no. car very nicely. Just going out a shot there was the beautiful Morgan. Um, and we may get another chance to have a look at the Morgan SLR as Alex Brundle comes up to lap it yeah, now. He, he knows his way around here a lot because he raced in Formula Palmer Audi in the past, he raced in Formula 3 and Formula 2. Yes. And uh, now made a very nice career for himself in, uh, in uh, sports car racing at the highest level in the World Endurance Championship, driving actually for a Polish team this year. And he has in the past won the um, LMP3 section of yes. the European Le Mans Championship with United Motorsport, yeah. the top team that's owned partly by Zach Brown and, of course, by Richard Dean, probably one of the very best sports car teams. I mean, Brundle's much in demand for driving those. He had a big blip in his career when he hurt his back badly, you know. He was out, yes, for, that's right. Right. out for the best part of the season, but he's certainly back there now as one of the fastest men. And uh, quite a few... Um, Oh, there's a Morgan. There's, there's, a, there's the SLR. Ollie Bryant just lapping him. Yeah. But isn't that a beautiful car? The yeah. polished aluminium bodywork. Just look at drifting, being very spiritedly driven as well. And wonderful to see it. Uh, it they really are such beautiful and rare cars. Uh, that's uh, John Emerson and Peter Horsman in number 57 there. Yes, they've been lapped, but it's only a... Um, it, it, it is in a different class to all the... E-types and Shelby's uh, that are coming roaring past him now. But look at that. That is one of the great pieces of artisan British yep. automotive workmanship from the 1960s. Well, and you just have to admire so, that look. Yeah, what a great shape. L.R. Lawrence Racing, Chris Lawrence, sort of very much on the fringes of Formula One at one time. You know, he kind of had um, a Cooper, didn't he? With a, with a Ferrari a, with a engine. With a rather strange Ferrari sports car engine in it. Which, which um, I mysteriously... Caught fire at I Silverstone. I actually saw the, the Daily I did see the smouldering remains of that, <laughs> yeah. I have to tell you. And one guy we haven't mentioned, is it right there in the top ten, going very well indeed, is John Davidson in the TVR Griffiths. Yes. I think now... A, a, Number sure. 88, is yeah, that, and yes? Got, who's that guy with him now? A uh, Ruben. As Oliver Ruben, Oliver I Ruben, think. Oliver Ruben, yes. And, um, uh, the elder Ruben, it was the great man for preparing those TVRs. Oh, right, so, OK. Uh, so I think a... I'm really certain that's his son uh, now taking the co-driving responsibilities. Yep. He's in class three up there at the top, along with, uh, for instance, uh, and interestingly, he's actually some way in front of Mike Whitaker at the moment. Yes. Mike Whitaker appears to be happy to sit in ninth place. In fact, let's just do a little running order. In first place at the moment, as you can see, is Alex Brundle from Andrew Jordan, Oliver Bryant, Jason Minshaw, James Cottingham, and then it's John Spears who's waiting for when he does his pit stop, uh, probably in the next uh, 25 minutes or so, he is going to hand over to Tiffany Dell, which can't be a, a bad handover. In eighth place, it's um, Andrew Haddon. Andrew Haddon. Yep. Very quick he is. And in ninth place, uh, the car we're just keeping our eye on in order to see yeah. 
how much of a forward charge he makes. And Wilson has got the Pearson uh, number four white Cobra. That's Gary. Uh, up to uh, up to tenth place. So that's your top ten at the moment. Cheerful wave from James Cottingham at the driver of the little Morgan SLR. So some really great cars to look at all the way down through the field. Now, Chris, you of course uh, uh, the, um, ran the master series for a while were you very much involved with this gentleman driver's uh, category because it's very, been so successful very much so um the category being started by uh, london-based american carol spag um, ah, yes, a right. few years before and had built a reputation as a series that was running on its own but trying just to find races to go to in europe uh, yes. and so um, when Carol decided to pass the, uh, the pass the series along to uh, Ron Maiden uh, and Rachel Bailey and the Masters team, then including myself, um, we decided to really build this up. And of course, what's happened is that as Masters package has developed with sports cars, Formula One, GT cars and touring cars, a lot more people have bought themselves cars in order to go and join in the Gentleman Drivers Series to keep yourself busy through the weekend as yeah, Calusa yeah. in the Ferrari finally makes it past the Irish-driven Cobra Daytona Whoa. Coupe. That was all a bit tight and he'll probably blast past him on the straight now with the bigger engine, yep. I suppose you ought to call it gentlemen and a few professionals, sir. Yes, series. that's right. <laughs> well, there used to be a cricket match at Lords, wasn't there, yeah. called Gentlemen well, versus the Players? Yes. And um, there is um, some point i mean young lucas halusa is um, as close as you can get to be a pro racer without being a pro racer yeah. isn't he yeah. i hope he uh, feels he can entirely trust um the people he's racing with because uh, his car is an extremely valuable and rare motor car and it's just is great it, yeah. to see it being it raced is isn't unique. it uh, yeah. is unique now uh, they're coming up on the number four yeah. cobra now um, and i think that's a bit of a drop down the order isn't it i think it is um, yeah, um the wilson pearson car is just in front now uh, in fact being not, uh, not held up deliberately uh, but there's uh, a yeah. latest a land to lap first isn't there i mean there's a good old battle going on at the front of minshaw uh has just put in the fastest lap of the race thus far in the car he'll hand over to melling cotting him uh, there just uh, uh, biding his time in fit and interestingly, while we were talking about how close the number 69 Red Cobra was getting to the Ferrari, I yeah. noticed that the stewards have had a look at an incident oh, yeah. that that very car, number 69, had when they yeah. were racing with the 50 sec number 52 yeah. car. Um, and the 52 car was the Ginetta, and that would explain yeah. the broken suspension. Absolutely. But it says well the spotted. stewards will not be taking any further action. But I suspect Ron Maiden and Mike. Well, there's a bit of damage on the left front. There you 69. go. I think they did have a little coming together, unfortunately, yeah. and that's what knocked the Ginetta out. I'm sorry that happened out of shot, but uh, that was clearly the story. So at the front, Alex Brundle still pushing on. I'm just wondering who is driving the. 69 it is michael cullen who is probably more of a pro racer in the irish car yeah. than paddy shovelin who is uh, they're, they're, they more, are, of, more of the gentleman as opposed well, to the I player think they're both gentlemen they're, they're both mates that raced in the european ferrari challenge against ah, each there other you go, there you in go. the past so that's how they uh, got to know each other and i think uh, both had uh, race wins in that series. Uh, but uh, that series was very much not a no-contact sport, wasn't it? No, that's right. <laughs> well, it continues to, to this day, of course, but yes. It's nice to see those Irish guys going well. And isn't it nice, Andrew, that we just had a wide shot there looking along the pit straight and to see the crowd yeah. actually out enjoying motor racing again. People well, hanging on the fence in yeah. the outer paddock, people sitting on the banks at Brands Hatch. Unfortunately, the grandstands uh, remain closed with all these government regulations. I say a few people sneaked in. Yes, I'm <laughs> sure a few people sneaked in. Yeah, and I but, mean, there's lots of social distancing here. Look, I mean, they're yes. well spaced. Yeah. Um, and the great tradition of cars parked on the south bank. Well, um, yeah. Isn't that great to see? Yeah. And we all remember crowded Grand Prix of the past at Brands Hatch with a mass of cars on that bank. So, and frenetic Nigel Mansell supporters in his famous Brands well, Hatch win. Yeah. 
Absolutely, it's his first uh, Formula One win here. So Cobra's blasting along with the Lotus and Lands. The bread and van tucked the in there. Lucas Alusa being very careful in the bread van and giving yeah. lots of credibility to see, see the, little, the smaller engine yeah, cars. Yeah, a little Austrian flag on the side of his uh, crash helmet. When you speak to him, uh, you wouldn't know, would you, that he no. wasn't uh, fully English. <laughs> oh. oh, and then, yeah, that was getting a little bit um, yes. close. Then, yes, you really don't need number 67. You don't need a bill for the bodywork on that car. Do you think he, <laughs> do you think he touched him? I think he very close. nearly touched him. That's Ted. No, maybe not. That's Ted Tuppen there in, in number 67. Very pretty little Elan, yeah. that, in, yeah. in the silver with the blue stripe. So no change at the front. The running order remains Alex Brundle in front of Andrew Jordan and Oliver Bryant and Jason Minshaw and James Cottingham. Except that Jordan just took a lot of time out of Brundle on that last lap. Brundle possibly held up in the traffic, but the gap has closed up to just, just a fraction over a second now. And the fastest lap of the race so well, far uh, Jason remains Minshaw. Jason Minshaw at yeah. 1 minute 43.424. And just to put that in perspective, the um, modern endurance cars, uh, um, full Le Mans spec yeah. ground effect cars, were yesterday lapping in 1 minute 21. Yeah. So, uh, you know, that's not very much of a gap given 40 years difference 40 years in the, in the build yeah. between um, the Ferrari bread van, for instance, and um, Steve Tandy's beautiful yeah. Lola Le Mans car. Yeah. That Cobra there is in the traditional colours, and maybe just a little bit of history of yes. how, how, how um, Cobra took on uh, Ferrari to win the World, World Sports Car Championship all those years ago, Chris. I, mean, I think uh, certainly your father's around and yes, filmed absolutely. loads of those races. Certainly did. So. Um, extraordinary that... Um, so what happened, essentially, was that... Uh, when Carroll Shelby decided that the AC chassis made in Surrey, England, was, didn't, yeah. was a nice was a nice chassis into which to drop a Ford 4.7 litre engine yeah. and make a bit of a race car out of it, he did a, get some support from Ford of America yeah. quite early on. But in the first couple of years, they came over to Europe and raced up against the Ferraris. Ferraris all had slippery aerodynamic shapes, didn't yeah. they? Yeah. And in order to make sure they really were going to win, they went back to the drawing board, and Peter Brock uh, was a young, young yeah. draftsman in the yeah. California shop working for Dan Gurney and Carol Shelby, and he just did a great body shape. And that's the one we're looking at. And they, they beat Ferrari to the World Sports And they Sports beat Car Ferrari Champions. to the World Sports Car Championship. And when I was a little boy, yeah. I had a T-shirt that said, Shelby American World Champions. Yeah. Peter Brock, there's two Peter Brocks. There's yes. P Peter Brock, you mentioned, is now still around the American race circuits as a photographer. The other Peter Brock was, of course, the great champion of Bathurst and yes. running his team, so he's, he's no longer with us, sadly. So there are two Peter Brocks. Yes, well, but Australia he was a very young man, that, yes, the American young. Peter Brock, yeah. when he designed that shape, wasn't yeah. he? Yeah. And pretty much in the days when you sort of drew a chalk shape on the workshop yeah. floor and say, I want it to look like this. I think you call it a cam tail, K-A-M-M. Yes, yes. yes. Well, you see how it was just with the Bryant car then, you see how different they are. It's effectively the same chassis, same running gear. I tell you what, isn't Ollie Bryant in oh, the right, red and yeah. gold car yeah. catch? And look, we've yeah, now got yeah, the yeah, front right three. With right with him now. Right with him now. So the Andrew Jordan in the number 27 blue and white Cobra we were just talking about, closing up on Alex Brundle uh, in the 53 Jaguar E-type there as they lap the Austin Healy yeah. number 91. It Ooh. And a bit tight. Yeah, <laughs> interesting. Two pro drivers has come from very different directions of their career. Yeah. Uh, Andrew Jordan always, I mean, originally came from Rallycross, you know, through his father, yes. uh, uh, Mike, and uh, that, you know that's where he cut his teeth in, in Rallycross events just as a teenager. Isn't and that then, good to see one, yeah. two, three that close together? Yeah, but Andrew uh, Jordan uh, uh, moved from Rallycross to circuit racing. Yeah, and he didn't still he? does some Rallycross as well. Yeah. Um, and then obviously Alex Brundle came up through the single-seater route going into, into Alain, Le, Le Mans prototype cars. So they, they're coming from very different directions. And Andrew Jordan obviously had many races around here, um, clashing with all the, all the, the big names of, uh, of touring car racing. Yes. I mean, he won the championship one year, didn't he? Andrew 2013, Jordan, he, I, I think he was second, and, uh, he was second just a couple of years ago, wasn't he? Then, yeah. Yeah and always um, with great sponsorship from Pertec. Um, and, um, and before that, the, the, those, 
those pipe clippings people, what were they called? I even went and filmed in their factory ones to do a... <laughs> uh, we did a, a, a documentary series on Andrew and Mike Jordan both racing together. Oh, yeah, indeed. In, in the series. Yes. Uh, no, no, I they really are close now. They yeah. really are close. Andrew Jordan yep. having having a look there with his uh, lights full on. Yeah. Trying to... Try, uh, he's not going to spook Alex Brundle by turning his headlights no, on, though, is he? No, he's not um, going to do that. But is this, Andrew, are we seeing an example here now of what Mike Whitaker, the canny Mike Whitaker... Oh, he's gone through, he's tried, and he's, he's going to go through, it. no question. Oh, oh no, another Anderson. Cobra was in the way. And Brundle's hung it out on the outside, almost into the gravel, hangs on, but... My, Whoa. Andrew Jordan makes it stick, nice move there. Yeah. But made all the more difficult by that other Cobra sort of being lapped in the process. So that was quite a move by... <laughs> Yes, that was a, 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 a little uh, dramatic moment there. <laughs> and, and Ollie Bryant still hanging in there in the red and gold Alaman liveried car. He's yes, got and all, if, he's got if Ollie gets a, a quicker run past yeah. this back marker here, yeah. the other Cobra they've got yeah. to lap. Oh, here's our little Austrian friend in the little tiny Alpha. Yeah. Uh, he's going to keep out of the way. We've got the blue and white E-type needs to keep out of the way as well because there are some very quick boys descending on you very oh, yeah. fast. And the Mitchell car has um, dropped back in fourth place now. It's about uh, 10 seconds further down. The front the road, three yeah. could not be uh, closer. Uh, Alec Brundle not giving up, is he? He's going to have another bite at him when he can. Yes, I think he Get is too. I have a feeling, Chris, that there's a bit more grunt in that um, big Ford V8 motor than there is in the, in the E type uh, straight six. <laughs> oh, 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 All of them really giving it oh, plenty. And, uh, I, Locker, he's right on it, isn't he? In this, um... Alex Brundle driving superbly, and now Oliver Bryant has got past, and so we really do have the first yeah. three all together now ah, as they come through clearways. And we are now, um, we've done 33 minutes racing, and um, the pit window will open quite yeah. soon. It'll be interesting to see how many of the pros want to stay out and uh, let their gentleman owner, as it were, yeah. um, only do the second part of the race because uh, that is really going to dictate how everything all shapes and, out. And the, the relative speeds of the second drivers, Aldous Lade, only in his third season, two seasons in Ginettas before we got this car, and John Pearson, hugely experienced, Gary's brother, but also very much in the uh, vintage racing tyre business. There's oh. a big, big lock-up there yes. from Alex Brundle, which yeah. is going to possibly flat spot that left front. Yeah, that's... Um, that was not oh, what he well, wanted to do. Oh, there's a Corvette Stingray. We hadn't given that a plug, had we? No, we haven't. Oh, another lock-up from Brundle. Well, I think it'd be interesting to see how those two um, pan out. Ollie Bryant's going to stay in the other Cobra, and obviously he's going to be... He possibly should be quicker than the other two number twos. Yes, and number 186 there um, coming on past us there um, in one of the uh, other uh, Cobras. Really, no. Was that what I was looking at? There was the yeah. um, was the Corvette that they've just lapped, yeah, yeah. and that white Corvette, a beautiful car, but not yet perhaps in its finest state of race tune, is the one being driven by Peter James. And if you want a good thrilling British detective novel, yeah. you read a Peter James novel, well, don't you? He's, he's, a, he's, a, he's, he's been a very very successful multi book award yeah. book, award book author, hasn't he? Most of the books. Are have they all got the word death in them? I think the titles are something like that. Uh, I have read two of them. No, some of them are a bit gory. Yeah, some of them are a bit gory. Now, look at this. A Brundle is not going to give up easily, just as Andrew Jordan's in front at the moment. And I tell you what, John Pearson, who's going to take yeah. over this car from Alex Brundle, for my money, will be quicker than Roy Aldersley. Yeah. I may, but, be, I may be wrong. Roy but... drove this car for the first time. This is only the second race that this car's ever done. Yeah. Uh, Roy drove it at Donington in the... Met, but was affected the main race of their historic festival. Yeah. Um, three weeks ago, was it? And he went really well. He was under a lot of pressure, actually. He finished second overall. Yeah. Uh, behind a Lotus 15, it was a very different sort of car. Yes. Um, but I was surprised how well he went. And obviously, you know, he's coached by Andrew Jordan as well. Yes. And Mike. And he's doing an outstanding job. He's a big uh, commercial builder from Essex. Their little blue Porsche that they're yeah. all the leaders are coming past now and lapping 
is a really interesting, Andrew, because that's the number 77 car being driven by George Gamble at the moment. Yeah. And he will share with Sebastian Perez what's unusual and different about them. They're both in their early 20s. They are. And they've gone historic racing, yeah. and they're both pro drivers yeah. in more modern racing. In yes. fact, in British and European GT. Yeah. George Gamble has a brother called Tom Gamble, yeah. and they've both done British junior single-seaters, started in Janetta Juniors, like yeah. so many of the yeah. young guys from today did, including yeah. Lando Norris. Yeah. Um, and um, it's just great to see that they are prepared to come and race in this company in a nice little Porsche for the two-litre class. Um, and it's something completely different and out of their uh, uh, usual yeah. age group of drivers in, in this yeah, series. Yeah, and, and, and Seb is, is, a, is a son of Steve Perez, British National Rally Champion Multiple a couple rally of years. Champion, and yeah. uh, very much in the uh, drinks business. Oops, oh, we've had a yeah, spinner. Yeah. And I'm setting off again, uh, not yeah. messing around. Yeah. That's Mark Martin driving by himself in his Lotus Elan 26R. Yeah. Um, uh, but he obviously outbraked himself getting into Druids. Yeah. So, yes, yeah, Steve Perry's um, sort of cocktail type, vodka y type drinks that they have. And in also clubs. a hotelier as well. A very good hotelier now. Comes from Chesterfield in Derbyshire, although originally as a Spanish heritage. Very good rally driver, too. Seb also continues to rally. Although he's racing, he's a good all-rounder. Oh. See, there's another lock-up there from that left front. Yes, oh, he's but still he's pushing. right with him. He's, he's right with him. Right with him. Alex is absolutely pushing hard here, but I do worry about that left front. Um, and where is everybody going to then? go? Yeah, but, oh, he's on the grass! <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness Alex me. Brundle really got pushed sideways. Yeah. He wasn't expecting the back marker to uh, give him no. that little room, I think. And now we know that he's wearing his brakes and he's wearing his tyres. And let's just right remember there. what Mike Whitaker said to us yeah. at the beginning of the race, yeah. Andrew, in his interview yesterday, when you asked him what his tactics were, he said, this is all about car management. It's a 90-minute yeah. race, yeah. old cars on narrow tyres and not money brakes, and you've just got to manage it. Yeah. And everybody is now flinging the car around. Um, Andrew Jordan burning up some rubber there as well. Yeah. I think the second part of this race is going to be very intriguing. Yeah. A little bit about the Pearson family. I think it's interesting. You know, there's say John Pearson Jr. Of course. Yes. And John Pearson Senior, outstanding driver in his time, and set up Pearson Engineering. Uh, and I think did he work for Jaguar originally? Didn't he in the race? Yeah, he was a Jaguar John? man. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Well, the, the absolute expert at, on D types. Yeah. Know, at Browns Lane yep. himself. Yes. And um, that's the proper thing. John Pearson a Senior still with us and. Um, uh, very much involved and intrigued with everything that's going on. The, the Pearson brother who's going to share this car, number 53 car, when Alex Brundle hands over to him, John Pearson, Jr., uh, is also the boss of the tyre business that supplies this entire grid yeah. with their Dunlop tyres. Now, of course, branded as Goodyear across Europe with the Dunlop brand name disappearing, um, but uh, very much... Uh, based at Daventry in Northamptonshire yeah. and a very big business supplying tyres to all of historic racing because it is now an FIA yeah. specification tyre. If you're going to run a historic pre-66 car, you run it on Dunlop L or Dunlop M section yeah. tyres. See, uh, on our screen it says ALD, but that's, it means Olsen and yes. Jordan. So yes. we, we, we have confirmations out from Jordan. Yes, in and, that car. and uh, it also says, P, it says PEA for Pearson when it is, of course, Brundle. But uh, timing and scoring can only keep up to a certain extent yeah. with all this. Um, you'll notice Ollie Bryant is maintaining a watching brief about 100 metres behind uh, Alex Brundle well, here. Well, you know, I wouldn't bet against him. I wouldn't bet against He's him either. He's a driver. He, uh, He's they, always uh, been very good at managing yeah. his car. His dad is a good racer still. And they, yes. they do quite a lot of racing out in America in historic events, particularly the Daytona 24 Classic, where they've had a lot of success. Yes, uh, they have a number of very big, hairy cars. They do. They, even had, they had a couple of NASCARs at yes. one stage. Yes. Yeah. Uh, they just love a big American V8. Yeah. And, I mean, I think, Andrew, when thinking about that and the preparation of all these cars, yeah. one of the things that's most astonishing uh, about the health of historic racing uh, in Europe at the moment is the domination of the British-based preparers. Yes, absolutely. Their preparation yeah. companies um, 
including the newly set up ones like Mike and Andrew Jordan's one and the Hall and Halls and yeah. Martin Stretton's company, all these companies are really a huge backbone of the British motor racing that. industry. Fast and wit well done, exactly yeah. as predicted. Uh, Whitaker has decided uh, the time has come yeah. to get on with it. He's moved up to eighth place and I think he'll be moving forward. So he said he'd won this race six out of the last eight years. <laughs> um, yes, so I... you don't discount him, do you? Some strategy. So, uh, These two have been having yeah. a great battle the whole time. The little green Porsche. And the Ogle. Ogle well, SA. Is, is that the Ogle there? Yeah. That's the Ogle. Yes, it is. And I think the Ogle is still being driven by mini engine specialist um, uh, who uh, really knows how to pedal these ones. Um, and that's uh, Nick Swift. Is No, Mark Burnett is driving it at the moment. Nick Swift will take it on. Oh, no, oh, the bread van. Oh, the bread no. van's off at... Uh, the bread van is off no. at Stirling's, and the race director will not like seeing that, just as the pit window opens. The pit oh, window is now quick. open. Getting quick. And so now is the time oh. to make a decision, and the Pearsons are going to change the tyre yeah. on the number four car. That is the number four car. Um, and um, look, the Morgan SLRs yeah. made the but decision. That's given them the opportunity to do that and not lose tyre. Absolutely. Probably you know, knock on wheels and all that, but you couldn't do that. You know. And there, so the leader, of, yeah. there's Brundle getting out. A great stint by Alex Brundle, and they've taken the opportunity. Um, You've got with to be in. 47 to minutes in. left to run. You've, you've got to make a decision now. The pit lane is going to get incredibly I'm interested busy. to see if that Brundle car, where they change that left front. Oh, well, they, they had the car up on the jack. Do they? I'm um, sure they will. And there is Cottingham. With now, he's not changing, so he's going to stay in this car. I noticed that it's uh, a Colombian registered <laughs> car. I think that must be some sort with of a left hand drive. Oh, yeah. And um, one wonders. Um, oh, the, it's getting a bit busy down there. Look, and, and the, the Bryant car's trapped in. This is all a bit. Yeah, yeah, there's this the Corvette Stingray. Yeah. The original Corvettes. Now, there's everyone has to stop for a minute. Yeah. And even if you're not changing driver, the Jordans have been very sensible. They've come yeah. right down to the far end yeah, of the pit Andrew. lane. There's Andrew. There's Andrew the Jordan getting helmet. out. Yeah. Yep. Still looking young and fit, just as he did in his very successful years in British touring cars. Uh, the owner of the car, Roy Aldersley, has now taken over. The 69 car coming in for its stop. That's the Irish team. And right. there is the safety car waiting to pick up the leader. But yeah, of course, there's no leader. Every, there's there's no there was Whitaker. There was Whitaker coming. Oh, really? Well, so maybe he he's decided not to stop well, yet. I think, I think it's wise, because if he's worked out the situation, I mean, it's very busy in there, difficult to work. Yes. And, um... Yeah, I think you're right. He'll probably come in the lap after this. I mean, uh, an extraordinarily... That's a Smithies Clarkson yeah. big... Uh, Cobra we saw changing but look at this yeah, I mean everybody um, in, everybody's um, locked in and uh, there's going to be a bit of a scene when those cars try and get out again including um, Peter James's Corvette yeah. I saw there yeah. now this is interesting so uh, Mr. Alderslade Roy Alderslade having taken yeah. over the, from Mike Jordan is out there the Roy, the red where is the safety the red car Cobra I think is a lap down isn't it yes d definitely uh, look, we are changing tyres and slight. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Oh, that's a lot of shot. <laughs> yes. And so, so uh, Cottingham um, yeah. has got a co-driver. Isn't shown on it. No, no, it? no. That's a different car, Andrew. That's oh, uh, different number car. 172. All oh, right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, is that Harvey? A Spencer there. And that's Richard Cook has oh, been Richard in his Cook. Shelby yeah, Cobra. Another part of the and game. now he's going to have a co-driver in with Harvey him. Harvey Spencer. Yeah. Yeah. He's yeah. a bright young man, Harvey Spencer. With uh, the very, DK engineering very overalls. Much part and of as DK. you say, good call. The two people who've not come in and have been picked up uh, by the safety car yeah. is Mike Whitaker, and he will be able to come and do his pit stop yeah. when things are much calmer. Yeah. So, yeah, Harvey Spencer. Um, Ooh, uh, I think I just saw um, Oliver Bryant overtake someone under the yeah. yellow there. Ooh. Um, so there's and our little uh, uh, Austrian uh, hero in the 1300cc uh, 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 car. Oh, nice the oh dragging, dear! Uh, dragging that Can out. you imagine how worried Lucas Alusa is about body damage yeah. to his beautiful bread van Ferrari? Do you think it's beautiful? Ah, it's yeah. beautiful as a as a as an icon of its period. Yeah. But it's not a great body shape, is it? It's not. Um, is it? Well, for me, that's a great body shape. Yes.
yeah. uh, the Daytona Cobra. Now, he's going to try and press the guy in front of him Daytona to catch Cobra. up with the actual safety car, yeah. which is way down the track. Yeah. Yeah. And look how few people, Andrew, have come back out again. There yeah. is John, John Pearson. Pearson at the wheel of his... Now, he's come through Sterling as well, so he's not that far behind. No. But we are going to have a massive shakeout of the race order. One of the great things about motor racing, it all seems like, oh, we don't know what's going to happen. And all of a sudden, everything's thrown up in the air and you get a safety car period like that. The bread van's in the gravel. Suddenly, you've got to think of the strategy. Whitaker's there is in. Whitaker. There is Whitaker Look, in. Look at him calling, calling the front brakes. You see that? Yes, pretty professional. Eugene O'Brien. A very oh, yeah. yeah, but look, the trouble yeah, is yeah, yeah. that um, he's on his pit stop at the moment, yeah. and the f uh, the front two running cars. That's right, they're out. The 27 and the 53 and the 55 and Bryant's car. But, but they're all going to close up. Yeah, but they're all going to close up behind, behind the safety, the safety car. car. Yes, yeah. indeed they are. Depends how long this safety car period lasts, and I suggest not for much longer because they've got that car out of there. They've got to get it out of the way. I, maybe Lucas will get back in it and can fire it up. Well, there's no you. damage to it, it's just in the kitty litter, isn't it? So, uh, and he can drive it away, and then it's all clear as long as there's no gravel on the track. Yeah, well, exactly. And off they go again. Now, so, you see, here, yeah. here we have... Um, whose Jaguar is that with Oliver Bryant just in front? There is the beautiful Ferrari, and he's now going to ask the driver, where do you want us to push it to? Yeah. Isn't it great? The boys and girls in orange, Britain's track marshals, where would we be without them? All volunteers, and if you want to join in motorsport and you haven't got a Ferrari GTO of yours to pull out of a garage, a great way to start is by becoming a marshal. They're trying to tell Lucas, please put this car well, behind get it the barrier. Up, get it fired up, we'll do so. No, it's going behind. No, I think they want him to get behind the barrier. Tragic, tragic story. We looked at the Ogle SX, didn't we? Yes, we did David indeed. David Ogle designed, brilliant. they only do cars. Yes. Uh, he, he designed the Reliance Scimitar, did, did he not? He did, an MBE. He died on the way to Brands Hatch oh, in, a, yeah. in an Ogle. In no, a road I accident. didn't know yeah, that. that was, I um, didn't know that. Yeah, back in a long time ago in 1962. Now, that's a, uh, that's a very pretty little car. The number 107, Mark Burnett with Nick Swift now at the wheel in the Ogle SX1000. Uh, I and mean, this really is press reset, isn't it? Yeah, we, we've got a whole new race. We told you that the Gentleman Drivers GT race for pre-66 GT cars would provide lots of excitement, and, uh, and indeed it has. Whitaker's down Back in 13th, in 13th place yeah. on his outlap, but as you rightly pointed out, Andrew, under the safety car, everyone's got an opportunity to close up. What's so frustrating yeah. for the quicker drivers is when the back markers who are caught in the, in yeah. the whole process don't move up and catch up with That's everybody it. else. That's it. And they need to be waved on. Come on, come on, come on. Go and catch up with everybody. That's the little ogle we were talking yeah, about. Yeah. Well spotted, the cameraman. Thank you very much. And that's such a rare little car. Yeah. There can't have been many of them made like that. I don't that, know how many they? they made, but it was pretty. I think I did drive one once so when I was a, a German. Now, exactly what I mean here. This E-Type Jaguar, yeah. Number 55, uh, which was Jason Minshaw, now being driven by Martin Melling, the owner, yeah. must close up because otherwise, poor Oliver Bryant. They're yeah. not sorry. The yellow flag, of course, we should say to those of you enjoying all this for the first time, means you can't overtake. Yeah. And so they've got to follow in a line. Would the number 55 Jaguar please move up? Is what Oliver Bryant's thinking, because he doesn't want to be yeah. left too far behind. Of course, no wow. no positions can change until the safety car comes um, in. We've got 40 minutes yeah. left to run on this race. Plenty of time for all sorts of action. We're wearing ourselves horse and I know. The excitement. Watch out, because we've got a lot of races to go yet. <laughs> um, watch out, though, for that land. Jake Hill's in that car now. He's in 10th place, and he's going to be humbling a few of those V8 machines, I can tell you. Uh, so number 166, Jake Hill, now at the wheel, in 10th place, as you say. Well, and where is the safety car? Yeah, Just now, now they've all been in. Did <coughs> everybody stop? Yes, I think everybody yeah. stopped. Oli then. Look, Oli Varant has come up alongside yeah. the man saying, please, would you hurry up? Yeah. We, yep, yeah, the safety car's come in. And off Ra racing again, Chris. And uh, the, you know, now it's Roy Alderslade with a lot of weight on his shoulders. Andrew Jordan having done a great job, but now he's got to uh, pedal that Cobra along. He commissioned uh, just the start of the year, I think. 
and uh, it's going to be very interesting these next few laps to see what happens and uh, see how uh, Pearson gets on in the E-type. Uh, he knows it well. Yep, Melling, he's, up, he's up the inside of yep, the number four it, Cobra. Yeah, amongst the leaders, the main constant here, of course, is Ollie Bryant, because he is still in that car. Yes. Yeah. Yes, and James Cottingham still yeah. in the same car. Yeah. Andrew Haddon still in, still in as well. And Whitaker now has really got to get a move on. Look out for number 46, the blue TVR. Um, a bit like the red car we're just seeing overtaken, but yeah, that's well, in the smaller how engine. How far back is he? Um, well, um, and they say that they're still going through some of the people who have been lapped, aren't they? Oh yeah, because yeah, yeah. Like, well, this um, is some... Listen to those huge oh, V8. Yeah. Here we go. There's Oliver Bryant, desperate to get past um, and get back on terms with the number 53 car. Ollie Bryant probably reckons his chances against John Pearson, I think, don't you? Oh, I um, think he will, yeah. Um, but he's currently being slightly held up by the two leader class cars, and Ollie will be getting a little bit frustrated. But that's the nature of endurance racing, yeah. isn't it? Just like at Le Mans today, if you're in one of the fastest prototypes, you've got to be prepared to work your way through the GT class every time you come up to lap them. 4.7 litres of uh, Detroit iron grunt in those Cobras. <laughs> That's a, that's, a, that's a TVR Grand Tour. Yes, that is. That that that's, um, was Malcolm Paul, who owns the car, yeah. starting it with Rick Bourne, so well-known preparation well, men. Here at Brands Hatch. And Based Paul, here at Brands Hatch. Paul, yes. I think, is in the city, isn't he? It's very much part of, of, of the Bista Heritage operation. Yes, I think that's right. Um, uh, very involved with what's going on there. And, and that's another one we should give a nod to, an extraordinary part of the strength of historic racing has been the ability to put so many companies together there on that side of Bista. Yeah. Well, <laughs> Still Andrew, sorted, what do you it? reckon? We've got 37 minutes left to run. Ah, difficult to call, isn't it? And uh, we need, we we need, need to three see... need to to get a bit of a feel now. We need to see I mean, uh, Whitaker moving yeah, forwards. Jake Hill's already up to eighth. So he's going... He'll be chasing after Tiffany There's now. our leader. And talked about Tiff, you know, obviously you know he was a TV presenter, but did a lot of ball racing, you know, very he did. professional teams. Did he have a fourth overall one year? I think uh, maybe. Yeah, yes, and, he, um, yes, he did indeed in a Porsche raced, 962. He raced a lot in touring cars as well. Yeah, um, but uh, Tiff um, famously um, made his way uh, through the series, uh, various series of motor racing by first of all winning a Formula Ford car in a competition in run by Autosport magazine. Indeed, indeed. Those were the days. Can you imagine any magazine now raising the money to buy a full set racing car? I've got to take a bit of a tick here because I gave him his first ever TV commentary. Oh, did you really? Uh, 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 yeah, uh, at um, Mallory Park. No less. Yeah, and um, I think whoever the co-commentator I was having didn't had a problem or something, and I literally went to the paddock. He was racing his Formula Ford. I knew he was a good talker. So, yeah, come up to the commentary box. <laughs> and, and that was in the days when ITV, World of Sport on a Saturday, oh, yes. were, you know, doing millions of people watching. Oh, yeah, indeed. Um, long, live, long time ago. Live racing, ITV, World of Sport, from doing showing national racing at Mallory Park. Yeah. Um, yeah I, still I, I, a fine I, circuit I, and still very much uh, in the business of motorsport, yeah, cars and bikes. Yep. Very popular, the Midland circuit it's there. Great in place to watch. My great place to watch. First race circuit I've worked from and reported from. Still yes. love it. Just and a, according to noted journalist Simon Aaron, longtime deputy editor of Motorsport magazine, Mallory Park possessed the finest breakfast in all British motor racing cafes. Uh, indeed, yes, he, he carries it well. <laughs> <laughs> that was always uh, very and much interesting. His, his son's here working as a, as a press officer today. Yes, at Brands Well, Hatch. he's very, very excited because he's a Chelsea fan. Uh, 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 oh, uh, he's no, uh, yes, he's excited about that, but he's also excited because Tom Aaron, press officer for Brands Hatch Circuit, is a Brentford football club fan. Oh, was that just, what the excitement they've just, was? They've yeah, just they've got themselves the promoted yeah. into the pr Premiership of English soccer. Well, listen, motor racing, forget the football. Yes, forget the football. Yeah. Now, Ollie Bryant. Ollie Bryant is now, now strongly closing, yeah. strongly closing. We didn't see him getting past the Jaguar, but um, he has got past yeah. John Pearson. So, um, uh, so we have all, all this back marking uh, Cobra. And yeah. When I say it's back marking, it, that's the one being driven by uh, by Gill, who do, having the solo run himself, he's in 14th place. 
but he has been lapped, which gives you some idea of how uh, far I'm he's... Gonna, uh, sorry to bang on about this. Yes. But the fastest man out there at the moment is Jake Hill in the Elan. He's just done a 41.4. Uh, sorry, uh, done a 40, 45 two, and nobody else at the moment is going quicker than that. No, you're right. The track uh, has, uh, has slowed uh, down, or the cars have yeah, slowed down a little bit. Dad Simon's going to be getting the, excited, I can tell you. Some of the uh, quick stuff from before. Jake Hill, and, uh, and a fine example of a young pro driver there, and um, 166 is his race number in that pretty little Lotus Elan 26R. And people always say, what does 26 mean on a Lotus Elan? It's because it was the Lotus that Chapman created immediately after the famous groundbreaking Formula One car, the Lotus, Lotus 25. Five. Um, and first, um, there's a prize for knowing what the Lotus 27 was. Yeah. It was a Formula Junior car. Oh, right. Of course it was. <laughs> it yeah, was the last Ar Formula thing, Junior Pete, car. Pete Arundel uh, would have probably won a lot of races. Won yeah. Of yeah. Uh, the monocoque chassis. Yes. The previous ones were, And I'm then stuck uh, yeah. as to what the 28 was, but the 29 was the Indy car. Yeah. And the uh, 30 was a horrible sports car. <laughs> then, they had, then they had the Lotus 40 after that, which was yes. 10 more mistakes, they said. <laughs> and <laughs> uh, knowing one or two people who have tried to race those at Goodwood, yeah. they, um, in, the, in the modern era of the great Goodwood revival, okay. say um, those are very dangerous. Now we're right upon each uh, other. And Jake Hill has done a 144.874. Uh, now, so as he's in seventh place, yeah, but this is the battle for the lead, Andrew, and they are now right with yeah, each other. Yeah, absolutely, Chris. And your little call uh, um, about 20 minutes ago to say I wouldn't be surprised to see Oliver Bryan trying to win this race is beginning to shape up very nicely. And Whitt now we are now. Yeah, there we are. Let's watch the... this, and then we'll tell you about Mike Whitaker who's moving up. But uh, Oliver Bryan goes down the inside with a fantastic move. Much later on the brakes than Roy Alderslade, but there's a, a pro. Well, I suppose he's a semi-pro, really. Yeah. Ollie against a, a relative newcomer and, and who's uh, driving really well. Oh. He's driving yeah. really nicely, but not so tight to the apex. No. Not so late on the whoops. Absolutely not so late on the braking. Yeah. Um, and um, now Roy's just got to keep calm, accept the fact that he may have to run to second yeah. and not lose a place to the fast approaching Jaguar of John Pearson, which That's you can right. see headlights ablaze there just behind the number 500 lapped uh, Cobra, the red Cobra. And also the, the Minshaw car with Melling in is going 10 seconds a lap slower than it went for Minshaw. There you go, so yes, uh, that would be about so right. He's going to drop down the field. He is going to drop well, down the field. Well, Whitaker is moving, is up to 11th and yeah, I mean, he's going quite quickly. Uh, is it in, we haven't mentioned the 174 Cobra. That was a, a late second uh, driver, Mark Donner bringing in the very quick uh, Scotsman, Andrew Smith. Who, um, yes. I mean, there's two or three Andrew Smiths race. Sometimes it's difficult to separate them. But this is a, a, a Scotsman, Andrew Smith. And uh, he is, um, he's putting in some good laps as well. And Whitaker now just done the fastest lap of the race in that yeah. TBR. Watch that boy. Watch that boy. He's uh, just about a 43-2. Yeah. But he's still outside the top ten at the moment. He's got a lot of work to do. He there. has. He's got Andrew Smith yeah, in front Andrew. of him. Yeah. And then it's um, Ollie Rubin in that other TBR number yeah. 88. Yeah. Then he's got to get past Tiffany yeah. Dell uh, in. Yeah. So, I mean, it, uh, he's got some serious runners in yeah. front of him yeah. for Whitaker if he's going to win this again. And he's not making the progress I would have expected. Uh, we've been running for an hour. There is now 30 minutes left on this Masters Gentleman yeah. Drivers pre-66 GT race. <laughs> John Pearson also um, taking some rubber off the tyres he would have provided himself to that car. I wonder if we can find that. Uh, oh, that and one. smoking oh, it again yeah. into Graham Hill Bend. I wonder if we can pick up that 166 uh, Lotus Elite uh, with Jake Hill at the wheel. There's he. Who's he's now running in. Well, he's, yes. six. he's just moved on to six. He's now. just overtaken Tiffany Dell. That's yeah. very impressive. In, in Nidell's TVR Griffith. So we're going to see. Um, Whitaker just moved up a spot. He's into the top 10 now. 
And that looks well, like a, yeah. oh dear, it's not going any further, yeah. isn't it? That's a shame, isn't it? I think that's uh, Chris Clarkson and David Smith. Is David yeah. Smith is peering into the cockpit there to hear what Chris Clarkson has to say. Um, but that looks as though that's a retirement there for another one of the uh, Daytona Coupes. Very elegant car, number four. Um, it looks very, it's a Hall and Hall yeah. prepared car that was originally. Um, but um, that uh, is now got Gary Pearson at the wheel. James Cottingham could move into the top three in the next lap or two, um, but he's got quite a gap to uh, catch the E-type that Alex Brundle drove so magnificently. Had that lurid moment on the grass as well. Yeah. That was quite something. Just, just looking at the times now. Um, well, the little Marcos now, um, where is he running? Yeah. Um, with um, Grant at the wheel there, uh, he's down in 23rd place. Um, a nice looking car, that. Um, Callum Grant, the uh, young man, Formula Junior specialist, um, and enjoying his time uh, running solo throughout after his stop and wait pit stop. J James Cottingham's had a very good race as well, isn't he? Uh, we, we had well, James, to... you know, yeah. Andrew, last weekend was racing at Brands Hatch here um, uh, in modern British GT, yeah. his yeah. first ever run out in one of those modern cars, so to say. Um, of course, he also owns the... Uh, Delara Le Mans prototype from which, about mid 2000s. Yeah, which was entered. For which was entered. Quite sadly, quite didn't didn't run in the Masters Endurance Legends race yesterday. Um, but uh, uh, Cottingham, a very quick and precise driver, lying in fourth place now. Car number 21. Here's number 166. Here it is with the chequered flag roof. Well tracked down. Now this car has made remarkable progress. Young Jake Hill at the wheel here. He's up to sixth place overall now. A little way behind Andrew Haddon. Um, in the number 16 car. Andrew Haddon uh, also in a Lotus Elan, um, but uh, you never know. He could be um, but very distinctive with the check yeah. flat roof. That makes it easy for us to find it. Yeah, it's taking a second and a half a lap out of Haddon. <laughs> Drifting it beautifully out through Hawthorns and the, and the, the it, long distance part of the track. He's really got to get his head down now because 20 seconds between the two of that, so he's got to close. I mean, he's got time to do it. Um, <laughs> but Haddon certainly, I mean, just. I think there's no doubt the he's track. trying. He um, is, he is trying. Yes. And somewhere. I see like sliding there. Somewhere behind the barrier there yeah, at yeah. Sterling's Corner yeah. lies uh, many tens of millions of worth of Ferrari bread van, which Lucas Alusa had to retire. <laughs> Jake Hill three-wheeling yeah. it through, three-wheeling it through clearways. I mean, he made a delivery with a Hovis, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> yes, supplying the marshals out on the Grand Prix loop with some... Uh, oh, look at that. Look how late Jake Hill can break the Lotus Elan that allows him to up the inside and away he goes uh, as he puts a lap on the uh, Wilson Pearson Cobra. Number 58 we hadn't seen much of in the course of the race. That's uh, Ben and Peter Adams. Peter Adams now at the wheel yeah. in a nice E-type, uh, white and blue. 1963 car, one of the earlier E-types in this race. The marshals with the blue flags have been very busy in this uh, with all the classes together. <laughs> Look at that. Jake Hill is really throwing it around, Andrew. Um, and what do you reckon? Well, Alders Slade is, is about three, four seconds slower than Andrew Jordan, which you would expect. Yes. And But John Pearson is sort of similar uh, compared with Alex Brundle. So they're sort of a bit even Stevens, aren't they? But then um, Cottingham was still right on it. And again, another of the fastest man out there is actually Jake Hill um, at the moment. But um, actually, pretty good times coming from Tiff. And that's Tiff there yeah, in, what, in, what, in the TVR with the big, know, big white bonnet. Right, you know. um, we all get older. Tiff, you know, he's a, he's a pensioner, I think, these days. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I think of him such a young man, you know, the first time he ever did the, the commentary with me. I think myself is a young So there is Tiffany Dell, the yep. a TVR with the white bonnet, yep. which I think may be a replacement bonnet, isn't it? Oh, is it? Yeah. Um, I think that normally I uh, think they've uh, had a little bit of a need to change. Um, yeah. Yeah, I really that just 
car looks right, doesn't it? It doesn't look over tweaked and over hairy, but uh, it's uh, uh, running down in 15th place now. So um, if we can uh, uh, look, Tiffany Dell uh, lapping the Marcos there. But what we're looking for is the Alain of Andrew Hatton that is um, in fifth place. In fifth place, very impressive drive by him. And, uh, and in fact, the last lap, obviously this traffic comes into play. The last lap, he actually pulled away a tiny bit from, from Hill. Jake Hill is um, uh, uh, eased out three seconds or so. There yeah. is Jake Hill over the car he just got past, Tiffany Dell in the TVR with the temporary white bonnet. Look at the effort he's putting in. Look, what a wonderful shot there. Oh, well yeah. done. Yeah. Well done, the she cameraman. Just a tiny bit of dust has just kissed the last bit yes. of grass there. Excellent, excellent work there. Just to see how they're actually tweaking the wheel of that. that. Morgan. Delicately, running. delicately yeah. driven. Already began and um, Billy Ballinger there, down in 22nd place. For that, uh, so they must be... Uh, I think they're leading their class, aren't they? No, they're not. The Holm Welch number 91 car is uh, leading that class. Um, win the Austin Healey 3000. Um, and car number 91, they are in leading the C2 class, but Arabi Gan and uh, Billy Bellinger in that pretty yeah. little Morgan number 71. There's a Stingray. And there's a Stingray. There's and a... there now is the man we're looking for. Yeah. That's Andrew Haddon. Well picked up there, and nice job. Yeah. Number 16, Andrew Haddon, yeah. in fifth place. And is Jake Hill going to be able to catch him? Oh, he is 16. Is he 16 seconds behind? Uh, no. Yes, 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 he, is. yes yeah. he is. Uh th That had an elite running in the famous Team Elite colours. Very good. Uh, obviously, that's an Alain, but they ran Team Team Elite was a sort of factory team, which actually run from Derby by David Buxton originally, and lots yes. of famous people. James Allen's father, another famous yes. commentator. Yes. Um, his father raced at Le Mans for Team Elite. John Wagstaff was one of the stars, but the big name that raced was, of course, Trevor Taylor. Trevor Taylor, and yes, indeed. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, uh, Wagstaff's son yep. uh, lives very close to Donington Park and still has that elite and it comes out occasionally in parades and so on. Yeah, it's not race right. now. I love Lotus Elite. Very, very pretty cars. Right. And when we started, gentlemen drivers, all these years yeah. ago, um, there would be occasionally elites out there. Yeah. But, uh, of course, the Elan and 26R yeah. is so much uh, quicker. That, well, that's not a 26R, is no, it? No, no, but, um, but the, uh, the Elans are just so much quicker than yeah. the elites. The yeah. elites originally raced at Le Mans in 58, yeah. 57. Yeah, yeah. Monocoque. Fiberglass chassis. If you can imagine uh, that, yeah. that was really daring, wasn't it? Yeah. Chapman, such an innovator for Lotus cars. And of course, these lands have got a central spine. Now the chassis is a central spine with four legs that hold the suspension coming off the middle section. There is our um, second place man, and with the third yeah. place man right there. Yeah. But I think you'll find that now, right behind him, yes, it is right behind him, is James Cottingham yeah. Yeah. in the pale blue. Colombian national flag stripe running down the middle of the car. What is that all about? Well, I presume James found it from a Cobra collector in Colombia. And I cannot imagine. No, no. Um, quite well, and we'll leave it at that. This oh, is the moment, goes, yeah. and he has passed him. Yeah. But if you think you recognize those colors, that's because those were proudly worn on the helmet of Juan Pablo Montoya. Yeah, um, absolutely. For um, many years. Who is and racing this weekend? Who, I was about to say, age 45, is having another go at the Indy 500. Yeah. And why not? Um, well, Oli Pryor, just to say, he has pulled away now um, from the battle for second place, or the battle for second, third and fourth place. So he's Well, here it is. Yeah, here it is. 12 seconds Second, down the road. third, fourth are absolutely right on top of each other. Just wending their way through some of the back markers okay. there. The Elan taking uh, the discreet way and getting out of the way. Yeah. Whitaker's moved up one spot, Chris. Um, but is he closing on the others? Um, Mike Whitaker well, yeah. in the TVR, an early yeah. tip from us on yeah. making a sensational second half run, come back, has got less than 20 minutes now has, to move forward one, oh, two, three positions. I think he's left it too late. Yeah. 
So there you've got the two different shapes of the cobra. It's a nice point. To see it in, yeah, in profile absolutely. like that, yes. And I mean, the Cobra Daytona Coupe just looks, it's not a longer wheelbase, but it just looks a longer car, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah, in Connor Sailor, Alderslade, very it's limited experience, is driving this car very well. Do you know, one of the advantages of going to somewhere like Mike and Andy Jordan's um, race preparation company is you get, whoa, oh, uh, uh, go. James Cottingham, is he going to give him room? Uh, yes. Roy, yes. very nicely driven by both of them. But I think that the oldest laid car's got the slightly slipperier oh, shape. Oh, yes, I mean, in theory it has, hasn't it? Yeah. Oh, Cottingham. It'll be a bit later on the brakes into there. Racing Team Columbia has, yeah. uh, has moved into second place. And the Jaguar of, with John Pearson at the wheel is uh, right there watching all the action. He may yet ease himself onto the podium. Yeah. Hill is still closing on. Had for fifth place. <laughs> Cottingham is now really yeah. flinging that Cobra around. Um, and he probably knows how far in front is Ollie Bryant then. He's uh, not going to get, he's not gonna get nobody's caught. Nobody's going to come. Assuming the car doesn't have some major problem, nobody's going to catch Ollie Bryant now. 18 minutes left to run in this Masters GT drivers, known as the Gentleman Drivers Race. 366 cars in a wonderful series of specifications. I do hope you've been enjoying yeah. this as much as Andrew and I have here in the commentary position at Brands Hatch well, on what is an increasingly yeah. sunny and rather warmer day outside, yeah. Andrew. So, but a marvellous selection of cars, lots of different design uh, principles going on, and from the E-type to the E-type e going down the inside there, but, but there that Colombian <laughs> car being slid around by <laughs> Cottingham. Fantastic. And uh, he's actually closing a little bit on, on Ollie, but I suspect Ollie's just conserving tyres and brakes now. We should say and, now, uh, Andrew, that um, uh, looking towards the end of the race, there's Whitaker. We picked up Whitaker. Excellent. Yeah. And Whitaker is now uh, still in eighth position. He's got to close up. Um, he's got seven or eight seconds behind Tiffany Dell in a similar TVR um, with the big Ford yeah. engine. TVR Griffiths, I'm called. Yeah, Griffiths, yeah. exactly. And they, uh, in order for him to play out his strategy, he needs to get a wriggle on now um, with 17 minutes left to run. Yeah. Andrew, it's just worth saying that, um, unfortunately, owing to all the government restrictions at the moment in, the, in this era of, of the health situation that we have in Britain, um, we're not going to be able to have a podium in the pit no, lane. No, we and weren't so able to interview people in the race as, as we'd like to. Just uh, seeing that TVR, the rear lights came from a Cortina, didn't they? Yes, they did indeed, <laughs> with the famous slightly ban the bomb look to them yeah, in absolutely. the rear light yeah, cluster, as in shown there, <laughs> yes, exactly. Cars built up in Blackpool, and TVR name has been resurrected. And uh, wonderful design by Gordon Murray. Yes. Uh, but we haven't seen any on the road yet, I'm not quite sure of the situation of that. Um... I, I think the story is that productionising has been difficult. Yes. They do have a factory in Wales which is meant to be getting ready to produce the cars to Gordon Murray's design. Um, uh, and it is remarkable, isn't it, Andrew? Um, even during this uh, era of this global crisis, uh, that people have been buying a lot of new cars yeah, and specialist yeah. fast cars. Yeah. Gordon Murray's own special design car, um, the 50, um, which is a sort of revival of everything he wanted to do with the original McLaren F1, yeah. um, is apparently sold out for its production run. So Whitaker charging on, but he is still in eighth place yeah. and he's got some catching up to do. being slightly held up here by the battling 911s. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Well, he's Whitaker. He is the fastest man out there now. Yeah. Yeah, he's down in the um, he's down in the 143s, the only person that's uh, dipping that low now, quite close to his fastest lap from earlier. Yeah. Remember he did a 43-2 earlier in the race. Now he's down to 43-9 and he's got to five seconds to make up on Tiffany Dell. Like being beaten by another TVR. That's look. Sebastian Perez in the number 77 uh, yeah. blue Porsche there, having a nice little battle with the uh, with the red and white one, uh, and uh, really <laughs> the two of them hard at it. Um, and now then that 
was being driven by Mark Bates. It's now James Bates now driving the red and white car. So that's very much a class battle. And here is the uh, man in second place trying to chase through to see if he can get up the inside. And Martin oh, Mellin's yeah. Jaguar. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's putting a lap on him. And away. Paddock Hill Bend has uh, seen, I almost dare to say this, Andrew, has seen remarkably little car in yeah. the gravel so far. Lots of opposite lock. I think we'll change the name of this to the opposite lock series. <laughs> Do you know, I think Ollie Bryant's um, pulled out a couple of seconds yeah, there. Yeah, he has, as, as James Gottingham got a bit caught in the traffic. Yeah. Um, Roy Aldersleigh is not taking it lying down. He's making a bit of a... Making, he'll, be, he'll be very happy if he can hang on to a podium here. Um, yes. Would, would Where is the number 53 Jaguar? And he's just out of shot here. Yeah. And that happens about five seconds behind that. But, uh, one car I haven't really mentioned has got one of the very best uh, races. Um, in the historic business, Martin Stretton in it now. Um, he's uh, driving the uh, the American beast there, isn't he? The 127 car. He's a Shelby Mustang GT. You haven't seen much of that. Yes. Uh, and it's uh, taken over from Nick Sleep. Please move that up. Quite yes. A few spots. Uh, Nick Sleep being the owner, having his car prepared by yeah. Martin Stretton. There is the car in shot, actually. Yeah, there it is. Yep. Um, Stretton uh, now getting on it. One of the uh, most well-respected driver preparers across European historic racing, and Martin enjoying himself as ever, and giving it a quick fling. And many years ago, I remember him racing for the Factory Lotus yep. in the 97 World um, GT Championship. Well, I was just going on to say, because he had a lot of success in the six-wheel Tyrrell, and we are yes. celebrating Tyrrell uh, this weekend. Yes. And their World Championship from 50 years ago. I believe grandson of... Uh, the real Ked Tyrrell, as opposed to the one that's racing at Tyrrell, who's a namesake, um, it will be presented a trophy at the end. Of the uh, Formula One three, race yeah, this afternoon. We've got three Tyrrells in that, and a, a new six-wheel Tyrrell racing. Fantastic. With an American driver. Something to look forward to in our yeah. broadcast this afternoon. There is Stratton, look, with a Texas <laughs> plate on the back of that. Well, and giving it plenty, as yeah. they say. So, just 12 minutes remaining now, and... Um, Ollie Bryant is only looking pretty at the moment, but it's never over until the uh, proverbial the fat marshal sees. <laughs> yes, that's right. <laughs> um, Cottingham, there's some 16 seconds behind, just 3.5 second buffer over uh, Roy Aldersleigh, the, the Essex uh, builder. Looking at the Mustang 350 GT there, being driven so rapidly by Martin Stretton now, he's a long way back down the field, I think, yeah. they're in 15th place, but it's good to see him trying so hard. Of course, um, Carol Shelby, as in Shelby American, and the Daytona Coupe and the Cobras and everything else... And later GT40s, of course, ..was, yeah. was not terribly happy when Ford decided to build um, these race versions of their Mustang. Yeah. Um, because, of course, he felt that they should have been making the effort um, and the Ford money coming into his GT cars, yes. which, as you say, the whole story is beautifully told in the Ford versus Ferrari feature film. Yeah, it's one of my couple favorite of racing films, actually. Yeah, do you know, I think uh, that and Did Rush, the two of them together, yeah. both uh, make, made fantastic stories. I thought that was really well done, that story. I mean, yes, there were one or two silly bits in it, like people changing gear when yes. doing 200 miles an hour on the Mulsanne yeah. straight in a GT40, which wouldn't exactly be accurate. Yeah. But um, well, There's Martin. Mighty Mouse. Mighty Mouse he was known as. Yeah. And um, Seb Perez here, uh, I notice he's got a road registration on that 77 Peb. Seb. Um, oh, look at Stratton, <laughs> he is really wreaking the neck of that device. Um, as he hasn't got really got anybody to catch, has he? Um, he uh, is quite a long way behind the Jaguar number 55. Now, Whitaker has now closed within four seconds for sixth place of Tiff. So it could, we could see a TVR battle to the uh, to, to the, the flag. Line. Yeah. Uh, less than ten minutes to run now. Uh, the order remains. Um, uh, where is Oliver Bryant? Where, where's, where's where Oliver is Bryant Oliver gone? Bryant gone? Where's he gone? We suddenly have um, James Cottingham 
in the lead and where around the track is there a parked red and gold Brian he's shown Cobra? In, he's shown it, he's, in pit. He's, he's in, the pit. in the pit and we didn't see him come into the pit. I'm sorry there. There were we saying that we thought Oliver Bryant would get to the victory without a problem. And there he is, is yeah. in the pits. He's out of the car and That's he's right. explaining yeah. to the preparer what the problem is. Uh, frustrating for them. What was that? Yeah, well... Um, Chris, do you think I might just run and try and, and find out? You OK? Just yes, take me a minute uh, to get course. down there and, um, and get a quick word. So while Andrew Marriott um, as enthusiastic and a committed a commentator as ever. Um, with all his years of experience of following all forms of motorsport, is going to see if we can have a quick word with Oliver Bryant and find out what the story is. And um, that's very sad for him, having worked his way into such a convincing lead. And he had a 17-second 17, 17 lead over James Cottingham in the car we are now calling the Colombian Cobra. This car here coming towards us, headlights on, having just uh, overtaken Peter James's Corvette and lapped it for the second time. Um, we have James Cottingham um, in the lead and unlikely to be troubled. That means the Jaguar that Alex Brundle started and John Pearson is now driving moves up to a very solid second place. And Andrew Haddon in a Lotus Elan is just 10 seconds further back down the field. There is our leader disappearing out of shot. And we are um, hoping that um, we can have a word with Oliver Bryant, who's come to join us in the commentary position. And Ollie, oh dear, oh dear, can you tell us what happened? Um, yeah, just on that lap then, changing from third to fourth, a very loud bang rotationary noise from the gearbox. So. Oh. I think the box or the diff has gone, but whichever gear I was in, it was uh, a horrible noise. So I just uh, oh, what stayed out of the way and brought it in slowly. You provided some wonderful entertainment and you really judged the whole time of uh, when we had the, uh, the safety car at the same time as the pit window. You actually were able to use that time and it got a little bit of a, a, a time to make up. Oh, and there's your uh, now replacement leader, James Cottingham. But um, that was a really interesting race for you, wasn't it, as you worked your way to the front? Yeah, it was. I mean, at the start, um, Alex, you know, took off at great speed, and I thought uh, he's obviously not used to trying to make a Cobra go 90 minutes. So, <laughs> yeah, he, he did. He was really on it for the first couple of laps, which is which is great fun. And I, I was actually finding with the full fuel, the anti-roll bar was hitting on the exhaust quite hard. So oh, I thought really? I better just let the fuel load burn off, and then the car will get better as the race goes on. But. Um, and yeah, there is yeah, your is. beautiful car sitting in the pit lane. So, yeah, it was a great shame because we we um, we were testing on Thursday and we had a problem with the gearbox, so we changed the gearbox on Friday and then uh, got, got away here to obviously uh, join, in, join in the event. So it was a real shame. Yeah, that's a that's a great pity. The gentleman drivers we were just explaining with just oh, and the number four retirement there now as well. Um, that's the that's the Wilson Pearson car pulls off uh, at the side there out um, in in the country but the gentleman drivers series has really been quite something hasn't it but you've had a lot of lappery to do haven't you i mean the slower class cars seem to have been pretty well behaved yeah it's been fine i mean this is you know a fantastic circuit to drive on it's one of the best in the uk and it's it certainly keeps you on your on your wits about at the back of the circuit i mean it's one of the best tracks i'm so glad we get to come here yeah it, i mean but the competition at the front between all the cobras and the E-types has been really strong. But it's interesting, isn't it, to see that the smaller class cars here, Andrew Haddon, is actually probably going to take third position, I think. Yeah, they're very, very good, the Alans, and they're fantastic, especially on a circuit like this, where you've got so many medium speed corners, yeah. and uh, they can carry the speed around the back and be almost as effective as a Cobra. Yes, and so, Ollie, then, you're a young driver yourself and um, raced in modern GTs and so on. How do you feel about all these young boys like Alex Brown? Brundle, Jake Hill, uh, and all the other young men coming in and joining in uh, with the with the gentleman drivers. Yeah, it's great. I mean, you know, I actually did it the other way around. I started in historics and then went to modern, and then now I'm back doing a few historic things. So, uh, you know, last time I raced here was actually in, in GT3 in the Z4 in 2013. So, <laughs> I've not actually raced an old car here ever before. So, um, oh, really? Is that right? So, yeah, that's it's quite uh, it's quite interesting. The T70 actually back in 2011, but that is a long time ago. That so, is um, a long time ago. Yeah, yes. no, it was it was a bit of a, an awakener going into the 
back of the circuit in the Cobra yeah. on uh, on Saturday. Yeah, remembering which way the circuit goes. And we've got to ask, uh, your dad's still racing with you? He's going to do some yeah, racing Yeah, he's, he's going to get year. out in the Camaro. He, he shares that with me quite a bit in the old Plus 8, which he's had since since 1977, so we get out in that now and again. So oh, it's, you, uh, yeah, it's, it's fantastic. And Andrew was saying, who spends a lot of time in America, that you and your dad are still racing quite often in American historic racing. You're still enjoying that? Yeah, we have. We've done the uh, the HSR Classic 24 Hour, which um, which Masters has a tie up with now. And, yes. Uh, yeah, we won the uh, class with the Camaro the last couple of years for the 24 when we were able to go. So not, not in 2020, but in uh, 18 and 19 we did. So uh, yeah, we'd love to get out there again when we when we can. When, when you can. And Ollie, have you got something else to race? You, no, just just the Cobra. No, you're normally out in a sports car as well if you can find one. Yeah, yeah, no, just the Cobra this weekend. It was a very last minute thing. We were a yeah. reserve up until uh, mid part of the week when a few people dropped out. So uh, but, no, it was great to come here and, and bring the car. And isn't it great? And we've got to say this, you've got a crowd watching you and cheering you on for that's the first time for a, a long time. Yeah, that's fantastic. You really notice it around here as well. And you've already raced at Donington this season and Silverstone. And you're hoping to get into some European races? Yeah, we are, yeah. We, I'm doing the um, 2 liter Cup Series over there and also, um, you know, we'd like to go to Spa later in the year with Masters and yeah. hope, hope that will happen this year. Yes. Well, it's really fantastic uh, to see these great cars out racing. And, Ollie, I'm sorry about that. What a shame. Yeah, these Thanks very much for coming uh, yeah, to we'll, talk to us. We'll give it, a, give it a go next time. Cheers. Thanks. Thanks. Oliver Brad there, who was leading this Masters Gentleman Drivers GT race right up until the last 15 minutes, and uh, still remarkably cheerful, Andrew, despite the disappointment. Yeah, and how nice. He, he came without question. He uh, came yeah. straight here. Um, of course, he's course, sponsored by Close Brothers, the bankers who are also sponsoring uh, this meeting. Well, the, the, the yes, Masters, indeed. you know more about that than I do. Yes, but indeed. Just, just a little uh, word it, for them. Yeah, and a, a big thank you to all Masters' various sponsors, including Close Brothers and Mousy, the um, yacht company. There are a number of companies whose support to historic racing is really important. And one has to mention what was Dunlop Goodyear, uh, suppliers of tyres to yep. everybody, but also Jeff Richardson's engine company. Uh, I mean, just a Speedmaster cars. Um, the support that's needed to make events like this happen is fantastic. And it's also appropriate at this moment to pay credit to MSVR, um, who uh, lay on all the officialdom for these races as well. Well, here we are with uh, the big surprise, Andrew Hatton on the podium at the moment in third place in yep. the team and he's not, no, he's not that far behind he's not is he he's not that far behind he won 0.2 seconds behind uh, john pearson in the e-type who is getting hurry up signs from his pit wall there as yep. you saw the number 53 car just lapping again the cobra number 20 who um that's uh, peter thompson at the wheel now in that green shelby cobra didn't want to give the place up too easily and uh, Andrew Haddon will be hoping in the little white and green stripe to land yeah. there just behind him. In fact, this is a real battle, Andrew, yeah. down to the flag here. Uh, how many more laps are we going to well, get in? Maybe two. Probably. Yeah. And there's just a minute and a half left on the clock. So the way Masters do the races yeah. is they're timed races, and then you run the lap. This, the other land's right there, you know. Yes. Jake Hill. Jake Hill is there I mean, just behind that Cobra. There he is. That's Jake oh, there Hill, he is. the white one, yeah. And uh, yeah, he's in fourth place then, and then Tiff is going to get fifth, and I think he's going to hold off Whitaker. So uh, Whitaker, having won it six out of the eight years, is not even going to be the best TVR. And be disappointed, I, I think, think it, with that. I, uh, I think it, in the end, his decision not to come in with everybody else didn't work. Yeah. Remember when everybody There's else our leader. Yeah. Um, and we he, no, he's <laughs> if he's coming through Sterling's now with 45 seconds to go, yeah. he's just made himself have to do another lap, I yeah. think, hasn't yeah. he? So um, James Which... Cottingham here in the elegant pale blue with a Colombian national stripe down it and Colombian number plates, do please note, <laughs> is um, crossing the line but there are still 20 seconds left on the clock. So the chequered flag yeah. will come out for him in one minute, 45 seconds time. But that uh, means that, that, means that, that poor old John that, Pearson's got yeah. to do another lap He's as well, lap. trying to hold off and, Andrew. And Haddon's got to hold off Jake Hill, who's close behind him now. So good battle here for the sort of fourth, fifth, third, fourth and fifth. There is the Alain look. So the two lands have. Oh wow! 
they are oh, right yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, it's right there now. Second, third, and fourth. Yeah, right there. Big lock and up. another big lockup by. Oh, 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 and he's... No, oh, the no. two in land. And, and Jake Hill's going to be able to continue, I would think. And I don't think well, the stewards are going to be happy not about like that. that. No, they're um, not going to like that at all. Is Andrew Haddon going to get oh. going again? What Jake Hill normally drives? Oh, British touring because. cars. Would you do that in a British touring car? Oh. Yes, of course you would. But oh dear, he got a little bit close there. Um, yeah. So breathing space for John Pearson. And um, before we uh, we don't have a uh, action replay uh, well, no, system well, for you, but I'm what? sure there'll be some discussion about that. And that means that Tiffany Dell is going to be able to jump past those two yeah. Elans, and he, he may well end up on the podium. Well, I think he will. <laughs> oh. He's thrown, wow. Fireworks at the end of this. So this is the winner yeah. coming up through clearways for the last time. James Cottingham, DK Engineering prepared. Cobra, the pale blue Cobra, number 21, and across the line, and a great and well-deserved win after Ollie Bryant had unfortunately had that gearbox problem, as we heard. So now then, coming into second place, is John Pearson in the number 53 Jaguar E-Type, started by Alex Brundle, and quick across the line he was. Now, where are the two Elans? that had their little tangle. Well, they definitely dropped back, they no, on the grass. Nidell has crossed the line yeah. third. Uh, Jake Hill fourth, fourth. Whitaker fifth, fifth, Haddon sixth. I don't think Andrew Haddon's going to be very pleased. No. Checkered flag, only... 90 minutes of GT racing. We told you it was going to be spectacular, and it, it certainly, certainly was. was. <laughs> uh, only, it was only a little touch, wasn't it? Yeah, it was um, only a little it, touch. It got down the inside of him. I mean, uh, Unfortunately, here we can't see it again, but... Um, yes, tricky, yeah. tricky, tricky. They're bringing all the cars and back in on the little short got, loop. Of course we haven't got a replay system. Um, There's Whitaker. Yeah, the stewards have not got a replay system, system either. What, what do they do? So I think they'll probably have a chat well, with they, the two go boys back to in the old, old, they go back to the old days when the... Chief Marshal on that corner, I think he called to the corner. Sent in an observation report. Yeah, so wrote it down, and the clerk of the course used to go around and pick up all the papers. And sadly, under the Covid race operating rules we have at the moment, all paperwork has been disposed yeah, of. Yeah, so we can't even and get so, a result sheet. So um, it's all um, just being done electronically. Yeah. So I think they are going to uh, be able to stop James at the top of the pit road. Or are they sending them straight no, back out? Doing? What are they do? No, they are sending them straight back out. Well, that's a shame. Yeah. Why is he stopping there? No, I think the idea is to get the cars out of the pit lane. Yeah, well, and, that's and why I'm going to go and grab him. You well, our little visitor here has managed to. Um, I think you'll only get caught him if he's got somebody else to drive the car. Yeah, he hasn't. Out. That's the trouble. Results, Chris. Well, there we are. So, James Cottingham in his Shelby Cobra, 50 laps done in 90 minutes of spectacular uh, 66 GT action from Alex Brundle and John Pearson in the Jaguar E-Type, and Tiffany Dell and John Spears made it to third place in the end. They'll be very pleased with that result. Jake Hill, after a little bit of argy-bargy um, at the Graham Hill bend on the last lap, uh, does get home in fourth with Mike Whitaker easing himself up to sixth for eighth. As fifth place, Andrew Haddon sixth in his Lotus Elan after that tap from Jake Hill. Uh, and then Oliver Rubin and, and Davidson in the TVR Griffith in seventh place, well done. And Andrew Smith from Edinburgh really pushed that E-type to get back a lot of places, finished eighth overall. The Irishman Cullen and Shovlin in their Daytona Coupe uh, ninth and Mark Martin in another Lotus Elan 26R in tenth place. Very nicely done. Ben Gill in his Cobra, um, a consistent runner throughout. Richard Cook, ditto. And Martin Stretton having heaved the Shelby Mustang GT right up to 13th place at the end from a long way back. Martin Mellon, the owner of the Jaguar E-Type, faded slightly from Jason Minshaw's position earlier on. Andy Willis, great preparer for Hall & Hall Company, with his client Stefan Gerbstel in another Lotus Alam 15th from Holman Wilson, the first of the Austin Healy's, a class winner there. Jones and Atkinson in theirs, Pangborn and Woods in their Healy 3000, and Callum Grant in the uh, little Marcos with the 
Volvo engine impressively into 19th place in his class. So there we have all the runners down through the field. The little ogle did get itself up uh, into 21st place from um, Simon Arabi Gan and Billy Bellinger in that lovely Morgan and the Morgan Emerson Horseman owned car, the SLR, such a pretty shape, dropped back to 23rd place towards the end from the Bates brothers in their Porsche 911. And, um, Mark Paul and Born TVR Grand Tourer, Ollie Webb pushing his way forwards in Mr. Zisa's uh, Porsche 911 and uh, the uh, rest of the field, including Peter James with his Chevrolet Corvette. Well done, sir. And um, Alders Laid and Jordan having uh, faded away completely, unfortunately, having run so strongly at the front. Uh, we saw the uh, Wilson Pearson one retire, and look at that, a crowd, a sunny day at Brands Hatch. There's plenty more racing yet to come. Uh, we'll let you enjoy the pictures for a moment or two. The contact, I can tell you, between car 16 and 166 is, it says on the scoreboard, being investigated by the stewards. No great surprise there where the two Elans tangled. Ah, now we're privileged to have come and join us. Um, Andrew Jordan, Andrew, welcome. You've been busy, and uh, you and Mr. Alderslade. And now tell us a little bit about Roy, because he's your client as well as your co-driver, and he's not raced that much, and that was a very impressive run with some problems at the end. Yeah, not, not sure what the problems are, actually, at the end, which is really annoying because he'd driven, uh, driven very well. But Roy I actually met for the first time here a couple of years ago, yeah. came up and inquired about Lotus Cortina, and then got he'd done a, a couple of years in Genetta's and then got the historic racing bug. So he's now got uh, a Cortina, a Mini, and, um, and during the first lockdown, he actually rang up and said, you know what, I fancy a Daytona Cobra built. So, <laughs> and we'd wanted to build one for a while. So uh, it's, been a, it, it's been a long project. It's been a, quite a tough project. So um, it, it was, you know, to be leading in the first team, it was very good looking yeah. after the car and, yeah. and, and tyres because, you know, you could be going half a second a lap quicker but hurting the car. So in, yeah. in the long run for, for Roy, you want to give him something to fight with at the end. And, that, and that's what we were saying, uh, Andrew, that um, this race, you know, surprisingly perhaps to people watching historic racing for the first time, is really about managing tyres and engine and everything else, isn't it? 90 minute race with a pit stop, so many things that could go wrong. It looked pretty crowded in the pit lane, Andrew Jordan. Didn't uh, yeah, it? It, was, it was quite busy with the safe. Obviously, you know, the normally if you get the inboard, you've got a lap to yeah. plan, you know, you're going in. Yeah. And uh, I saw the car in the gravel and thought maybe it would go safety car. So I was yeah. in two minds, and, and just as I, I flashed under the bridge into clearways, I saw the safety car light came on. So yeah. straight in the pit. So yeah, yeah it, was, uh, it was quite busy. So I was driving down thinking, I hope Roy's kitted up, ready to go, which he was. Yeah. So uh, yeah, it'd been a, I, I really enjoyed the first in, as you say, managing the tyres. Then when I got into second behind um, Alex and yes. cleared the traffic, I thought, well, I'll push take a little bit out of the tyres for a couple of laps and if I can get to him then great yeah. um, which I did so yes, then when did. I got in front I could then um, then start yeah. looking after it again. We were talking earlier um, Andrew and I um, Andrew Jordan we're talking to um, and it's a, a very interesting you with your background British touring car champion and everything else came to historic racing rather of our different route Alex Brundle for heaven's sake came out of single seaters and is now doing everything in world endurance racing in the modern prototypes and so on get you two battling it out at the front made for a fine spectacle yeah I, I really enjoyed it there was a yeah. couple of hairy moments with some traffic down the, the back straight I oh. looked in my mirror and he was on the grass so uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah it, it's um, but I, I just love the fact that you're having to manage tyres, there's no driver aid, it's all on, you know, when Roy got in the car, I said, look, he needs a lot of part throttle, drive it straight, you know. Yes. A Daytona Cobra isn't designed necessarily to go around corners that quick. It wants what are you to doing? 450 brake horsepower. Yeah, tire? exactly. Through the rear wheels. So you've got to, you can't ask a historic tyre to corner fast and accelerate that sort of horsepower. So I yeah. said, just drive it straight and, um, and lots of part throttle. Well, there we go, and uh, really, thank you very much. It's really good of you to come on by. Got to ask you a quick question. Dad, Mike, enjoys preparing the cars at the moment. When are you and he going to race together in something historic? Uh, it's a bit tricky. We've got, to, you know, we've had seven cars here this weekend, so someone's got to be the engineer. We, we, we have to look after them first. So there's a couple of races that we do on on our own, away from the, the clients, which, yeah. which you know, um, we can then just enjoy our day rather than making sure everyone else is all right. Which is that's part of the business. So that, that's how it works. Andrew Jordan, thanks Thank very you. much indeed for coming to join us. Fantastic. So there